In this lecture, we will create the login and sign up form and also read the form data from login and sign up form and use it. Now, in order to save some time, I have already created the login form. So here in the header, you can see that we have three menus, home. So this is our home page. We don't have much here. We have this dashboard link there. We are going to display all the tasks. Currently, it is not displaying any task because we are not logged into this application and we are not logged into this application because we have not written the logic for logging in the user. And third, we have this login link. So if I go there, you will see that here we have a login form. So in this login form, user can enter his email address and password. And when he clicks on this login button, the user should be logged into this application. So we are going to implement that functionality in the future lectures of this section. In this section, what we want to do is we want to use the same form for both login and for sign up. Okay. So when the user clicks on this register here button, here it should say sign up here. Then we want to have this email address and password field there as well. We want to have a button, but there it should say sign up. And here it should say if you already have an account, log in here. So let's first implement that functionality. So let's go to VS Code. And here I have created a new project called Angular Auth. In this project, if I go to the source folder, there we have this app folder. And if I expand this app folder, there we have these components this login component, home component, header, footer, and dashboard component. We have one task model. So this task model is same, which we created in our previous section. Then we have the services folder. And in there, we have this auth interceptor service, login interceptor service, and login service. So again, inside this service folder, these file which you see, we created it in our last section itself when we were learning about HTTP request and response. Now here, one new file which I have added is this route module.ts file. And inside this file, I am defining some routes. So basically, I have defined three routes. One route for the home page, one for login, and one for dashboard. All right. Then here, I have created two new components, this home component and this login component. We had this dashboard, footer, and header component in our previous section also. So it is same what we had in our previous section. Now in that project, I have added two more components, home and login. So let's go to this login component. Let's go to the HTML file of this login component. Let me close this home component.css and home component.html. So there you will notice that we are creating a form. In that form, we have an input for email address. And we have an input for password. Then we also have a button of type submit. And currently it says login. And here also we have a button. And it says register here. Now here I will set this button to type button. Because when this button is clicked, we don't want to submit the form. At that time, we simply want to toggle from login to sign up. And if it is sign up, we want to toggle from sign up to login. Okay, let's see how we can achieve that. So let's save this file. Let's open login component.ts. There, inside this login component class, I am going to create a property and I'll call it is login mode. It is going to be of type boolean. And initially, let's set it to true. So initially, it will be in login mode. Then, here I will create a function on switch mode. And inside this, what we will do is if this is login mode is true, we will set it to false. And if this is login mode is false, we will set it to true. So we will simply toggle its value from true to false or false to true. For that, we can simply say this dot is login mode equals. Now here we want to set its value to the opposite of its current value. So if the current value of is login mode is true, we want to set it to false. And if the current value of is login mode is false, we want to set it to true. So for that, we will use the not operator on this is login mode. So I'll say this dot is login mode. And on that, we are using the not operator. So we are setting this is login mode to true. 
if its current value is false and we are setting this is login mode to false if its current value is true all right let's save this file let's go to login component.html and there when this button this second button is clicked at that time we want to call on switch mode function so here i'm going to bind click event and when this button is clicked we are going to call this method on switch mode okay let me move these attributes in a separate line to make it more readable all right now if i scroll up first of all here this h2 element says login here but here what we want is instead of saying login here we want to show this h2 element dynamically that means if the user is in login mode in that case it should say login here but if the user is not in login mode that means he is in sign up mode so at that time it should say sign up here so here i am going to use string interpolation syntax like this and there we will check is login mode so for that i'll simply copy this property name and let me use it here and if is login mode is true that means the user is in login mode so in that case here we will say login otherwise we will say sign up okay let's save the changes let's go to our application and let's quickly test it so when i click on this register here currently we are in the login mode so it says login here but when i click on this register here button it says sign up here so it is working as expected then we also want to change the value of this button so if the mode is login in that case it should say login but if the mode is not login at that time it should say sign up let's go back and let's write the same logic here so again here i will use string interpolation syntax and there we will say if is login mode is true in that case the value here should be login else it should be sign up again let's save the changes let's go to our application so initially we are in the login mode so it says login here and the button says login when i click on this register here at that time now we are in the sign up mode so it says sign up here and button also says sign up and finally we also want to change this message so if we are in login mode we want to display this message otherwise we want to display another message so let's go back and here i will use string interpolation syntax and let me wrap this string within single quotes like this so if we are in login mode at that time we want to show this message do not have an account yet otherwise we want to say already have an account okay and here again i will use string interpolation syntax and i'll also wrap it within single quotes this string so if we are in the login mode at that time we want to say register here otherwise if we are not in login mode we are in sign up mode we want to say login here let's save this let's go back to our application and here we have an error okay that's because here we need to use a question mark okay so first question mark and then colon so if this value is true in that case this string will be returned otherwise if this value is false this string will be returned so let's save the changes now let's go back to our application that error should be gone so initially we are in the login mode so it says login here button says login and here it says register here when i click on this register here button now you will see that here the heading is sign up here button says sign up and in the message it says already have an account login here so this functionality is complete now what we want is whenever a user enters some value in these fields for example let's say the user enters his email address and also the password we want to read these values so when the user tries to sign up 
at that time we are going to make a post request and with the post request we are going to send this email address and password and also when the user tries to log in at that time also we want to read these values and when the user clicks on this login button we are going to make a post request and with the post request we are going to send this data so first we need to read these data for that in this lecture we are going to make use of template driven approach but feel free to use reactive form approach if you are comfortable with that okay now if i go to vs code in the template driven approach the first thing which we need to do is in the app module first we need to import forms module we are already doing that here so we are already importing forms module from angular slash forms as you can see so that is the first step let me close this file in the second step what we need to do is on each of these input elements we need to provide a name so here i'm going to provide name as email and for the second input i am going to provide the name as password then we also need to use ng model directive on each of these inputs so let's do that i also want to make these two input fields as required so first of all let me move these attributes in a separate line to make it more readable and now to make these fields required i am going to use the required attribute on both of these fields and also what i want is i want password to be minimum eight characters so i am also going to specify another validator on this password field which is min length and i am going to set it to eight next what we want is we want to make this button disabled if the form is not valid so if any control of this form contains an invalid value this submit button should not be enabled so for that what i'm going to do is on this form i'm going to add a template reference variable i'll simply call it as auth form and in order to create a template reference variable first we use the pound sign and we provide a name for the variable so i'm going to call it as auth form and to this we are going to assign ng form so now this auth form variable it is going to store an instance of ng form okay and now we are going to use this auth form template reference variable on this button so again in order to make it more readable i will move some of the attributes in a separate line here i'm going to bind disabled attribute and to this we will simply say if auth form dot invalid okay so if the auth form is invalid in that case we are going to disable the button so let's save the changes now what we want is let me close this terminal here so now what we want is when this form will be submitted that means when this submit button is clicked the form will be submitted right when this submit button is clicked the form will be submitted and when the form will be submitted we can listen to ng submit event and when this ng submit event happens we can execute some logic so here to this ng submit i am going to assign a method i'll call it on form submitted you can call this method anything and to this on form submitted i am also going to pass this template reference variable this auth form template reference variable now let's go ahead and let's create this method in the login component class and here this method is going to receive an argument let's simply call it as form which is going to be of type ng form right and in order to use this ng form we also need to import it from angular slash forms so we are doing that here all right now all we want to do is from this form we want to read its value and for now we are simply going to log it in the console so here let's say form dot value and we are also going to reset the form once the form is submitted so we can simply call reset method on this form 
queries let's save the changes let's go to our application okay let me open developer console here let's go to console let's clear everything and currently if i don't enter anything in these forms in that case this form will be not valid so when i click on this login button it should not log anything here but if we enter a valid value for example john at gmail.com so it is a valid email and here we also need to provide some password currently if i enter only four characters in the password and when i click on this login it is not going to log in because we have specified that the password should have minimum eight characters so, and if we specify those many characters now both these field contains valid values right so now when i click on this login button it should log all right here it has logged an object which only contains password it does not contain any email field so let's go back to vs code and we have added a name called email here and here actually it should be ng model okay so because of this we had the error so it should be ng model also on this email field i will add one more validator which is email so in this field we only want users to enter a valid email let's save the changes let's go back to our application let's enter an email so for example john at gmail.com and a password of minimum eight characters and when we click on this login button you can see an object which contains the email and password has been logged here so in this way we are reading the value which the user has entered in this login form if we go to sign up there also if we enter a valid email again john at gmail.com and some password which should be minimum of eight characters and when i click on the sign up button at that time also it should log that email and password so in this way we are reading the email and password from the sign up form and the login form and once the submit button is clicked it is also resetting the form as you can see here all right so now in the next lecture we are going to write the logic of signing up a user on our server on our firebase server this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day